So what I'm going to talk to you today is the power and energy of group consciousness. Uh, we're in the age of Aquarius now, and the, the group conscience will become more important as we evolve than the individual. So we are in essence unified, a single reality, yet we experience duality. And we've been talking about this in workshops and in previous talks about what consciousness is, that we are all conscious and part of this all-pervading, this omniscience, this absolute, yet we know ourselves as individuals. Our world is built on values, expanding separation, separateness. When we choose the power of love over the love of power, we energetically change ourselves. And I'm going to explain to you what I mean by those words in a lot more depth. We change our relationships with the people around us and therefore our world, because we are all one and we are all interlinked in ways that we're only just beginning to understand, that science is beginning to understand, and science and the esoteric wisdom are coming closer and closer together till I think we may even see in our time the beginnings of a true brotherhood between those very separate disciplines. And I feel excited and welcome what we're seeing in that joining. By consciously coming together in groups and united higher purpose, we have the potential to transform the way we live. And this is what is going on in the world at the moment. We are in a time where everything is in change, is chaos, where, where everything is disturbed. And many of the old ways of being will be gently set aside, or maybe not so gently set aside, to enable the blossoming of that which is new. So that the, as the phoenix rises from the ashes, this is in the time, we're in the burning, we're in the fire. You've had many people so far in this school talk about that we are one absolute indivisible omniscience. And this universal intelligence of the universe is something that we are part of and we can tap into once we know that we are part of that. In science, they call it the unified field of pure consciousness. In HPB's writing, you've heard this quote from Janet yesterday and from others, that everything in the universe throughout all its kingdoms is conscious. And we've had... Uh, examples from all the different kingdoms, all on its own plane of perception. We are here to expand our awareness of consciousness. Every time that we expand our own individual consciousness by making conscious that which is unconscious within us, by shining a light on the darkness within your psyche and drawing it out into the light, you expand your own consciousness and you collectively expand the consciousness of all. You cannot not. And this is what each and every one of you, as you experience yourself as an individual, is here to do. And as this process... Oh, sorry. Sorry, Damon. <laughs> as, this pro as this process... You got it. As this process continues, the, the con consciousness becomes aware of itself as the consciousness expands. And this is what you're here to do. And when groups come together with united purpose, they can create magic and change that no individual working on their own with their own separate egos and ideas of the right way to do things can ever achieve, no matter how good their intention. And I'm going to expand on some of these ideas about bringing ourselves together. But first of all, we need to find a way to live in the world in harmony as it is. We know how the world, we hope, will become and what the future holds. But we are in the here and now and the world is as it is and people are who they are. And each one of us is a personality, integrated and coordinated or not very. Okay? And that's what we're working with. And that's what we embrace. Life gives us moments 
of connection where we understand and experience a unity. In that moment, our own personal ego self melts away and we are aware that we are linked to something far greater. And you may have had these moments yourself, these experiences where you just feel one with all. And at that moment, your individual awareness melts away and you connect to all that is, to this universal consciousness, and you will know in that moment that you are one with all that is. These moments wake us up. We come to know that we are not an island unto ourselves, that we are our brother's keeper, that we are all one. We come to see our role in a part of a bigger plan, to understand that each of us has an individual part to play in something far greater than us. In those moments, we wake up to our part in a great service, our small part of service in something much greater. And what we, what we wake up to is a desire to seek the highest good for all, rather than our own personal desires based on our ego needs to protect what we believe and see is right, we let go in that moment and we have a desire for what is best for all. And am I right in thinking that you know what I'm talking about, about these moments that you have? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, brilliant. If we have groups of personalities coming together, each driven by their own ego, trying to protect their own idea as right with their own agenda, no matter how good the intention of that group, they will not, they cannot achieve a united higher purpose. They will not achieve the coming together energetically, which I'm going to expand on, that happens in a group that opens that group up to channels of far higher energies that connects that group to universal mind, where energy starts to flow in through the souls of each of the individuals to the group, group as an entity in a whole. And anyone who's worked in a group where things are what they call in the flow, when things are really happening, will know how that energy feels when the group comes together and forgets their individuality and works together. But before we can do this, we need to understand a little bit about ourselves, a, bit, a little bit about why we feel and behave separately in a group. And what I want to talk about, where there is connection, there is love. That is what love is. Love is an experience of connection. Whether it be a connection within yourself, connection with another, connection with spirit, with something higher. When you feel connected, love abounds. Fear, doubt, are simply a disconnection. It's where you have lost your connection. Love is soul-based. It's when you are operating in the higher centers, in the buddhic centers, in the higher self. When you are, when you are uh, operating from a, a fear, ego, perhaps personality-driven place, this is in the lower chakras. You're, you're operating in the lower centers of the body. Keeping me is separate from everybody, uh, rather than feeling that connection. For a group to be successful, we need a combination of inspiration. And this comes when intelligence is combined with intuitive knowledge. The intuitive knowledge opens us up to universal mind. Information and ideas and solutions come in that we as individuals with our own lower mind working things out logically could never have come up with. Many of the divine thinkers, many of the inspirational thinkers of our time and times before have openly said, it's not mine. It came to me or through me. Einstein was, was classic. He said, you know, the intuition comes and then I go and do the math to see how I can work out with my rational mind to explain it. 
So we need this inspiration, but we also need united purpose. And this comes from a joining of heart energy. So it's not mind alone. We need to bring the heart energy into the group. And it's the heart energy that connects the group and gives it united group purpose. And this is where we combine the energies of uh, an esoteric astrology of will and love. And we bring these rays together. And the, the people in the group, then the group becomes greater than the sum of the parts when this heart energy is involved. And we see truth, beauty, and goodness expressed in the world. This, this evokes the will to good combining with the power of love. And this is where we, we get creative intelligence. This is where we link into the universal mind. We are the throat chakra of this planet. We are here to help sanctify this planet, to raise the vibration of this planet. And we are here to do that through our throat, to bring the energy of the heart and the inspiration of the mind through to express truth through the throat through creative intelligence. And this is where the power of what we say is so important. In the age of Aquarius, Aquarius is the age of group work. We have developed our individual consciousness and many fine minds. But now we need to come together and we need to start to understand the heart energy and bringing it together with those minds. So not separate, not working one or the other, but together. And in this age, we communicate truth that comes from the heart, but is inspirational. It has opened up to those higher channels. And what is happening? Most of humanity, the chakras below the solar plexus are open and functioning. And those people who seek a spiritual life, the heart chakra is starting to open the throat is starting to open. And some people who are further along on, on their path, the third eye, the Arjuna chakra is opening and eventually the crown, when the, the body becomes fully uh, enlightened, when the soul is completely infused with the personality and, and is burnt away completely because the three become, two become one. The monad comes down and it becomes one entity with the person operating purely my will be thy will, purely as an act of service to, for the will to good, for all of mankind, not for their own personal, their own personal desires and needs have gone, long gone. So by opening the heart center and opening the throat and getting this truth and communication, we come together in groups and this is where we have inspirational change. This is where the group energy can create magic, which is the organizational magic created through the seventh ray energy that's coming in, it's pouring in through this age of Aquarius. So when we shine the light of that which is unconscious within us, we expand consciousness as a whole. This is our remit, man know thyself. Bring into the conscious light that which is in the darkest realms of your psyche. Each time that you recognize the ego, you transcend the ego. When you see it, who sees it? Who sees that behavior? Who sees the ego? You do. Your higher self does. That part of you that detaches in meditation and watches the thoughts, that part of you sits back and sees your ego playing in the world, playing out some conscious, unconscious, conditioned fears, behaviors based on that which is darker in you, that which is unconscious. When you see the ego at work, you have a choice in that moment. You can change and transcend that in a moment. We think change is a long, hard, arduous process. It isn't. Change can be instantaneous. It's, it's the light. It's the illumination. It's the intuitive knowing that, that you no longer wish to behave in that way, that you are just setting aside that ego desire and laughing at it, seeing for, it for what it is. 
Do you ever find that you laugh at some of those thoughts that come into your mind that grab you? This morning when I was trying to juggle children who had to go places and making lunches and I'm getting really stressed because I'm thinking I need to be focused on this. This is what's important today. But I've got these kids that have got to be dealt with this morning and I'm getting myself in a real tiz this morning. I had to take a step back and think, no, I'll be helped in the talk. I need right here and now in this moment to get these kids sorted so that they're happy. Then I can get myself here and the rest will take care of itself. I just tap into something that's greater than me. And that's what happens. It's a trust. But in that moment, all my fears and doubts, oh, can I do this? Am I a good enough speaker? Da, 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 all came flooding in. And I could have been overwhelmed by those and wound up a puddle on the floor. <laughs> and I was close. But <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but I took a step back. And through my yoga, I took a started breathing deep down in my belly and just calmed my physical body, calmed my mind, allowed myself to step back into my higher self and think, that's just my ego. Do you know what I mean? It's just fear. It's just look it in the eyes. So you're just fear. Come back to connection. Come back to knowing all of these people here are here because they want to know or they want to connect with me and hear these words. You see what I mean? That's an example of just stepping back, seeing the ego at work and thinking, actually, no. No, I'm not going there today. Okay. We experience our universality and our individuality both at once through the etheric body. And this is where science is coming into a time where it's helping us to understand. So your etheric energy body that surrounds you is how you exchange energy with living things every moment of the day. So everything that is living, everything that has consciousness, you are exchanging energy. Your etheric body bumps up against the etheric body of plants, of animals, of other people. And you are already masters at understanding energy. You just don't know that you are. Can you tell me, do you know when somebody's angry without them having said a word? Can you feel it? That's in your etheric body. Do you know if you walk into a room, if there's been, you know, an argument or there's a bad atmosphere in the room? Yeah. Okay. When we are in love, the energy, we pour energy into the other person's etheric body from the heart. And it's a really good feeling when someone pours energy from the heart into your etheric body, isn't it? And we pour it back, and there's this lovely circulation of energy. If you want plants to grow, just love them. It pours out through your hands and connects with the plant. Your animals, you connect through your eyes. You connect with your heart energy. We are living in a world of energy. There are cosmic energies. There are, you know, it's just, it's a sea of energy. And this is what connects us all. All your energy fields are actually one at the moment. I can feel a oneness in the room. Even though you have an individual etheric body, in those moments when you connect that all, to all that is and you experience unity and oneness, your own individual etheric dissolves and you connect with energy, all that is. So for that moment in time, you have no individual etheric. Your aura goes out as far as, as it can go. In the yoga workshop yesterday, we were doing some work with opening the heart energy and seeing how far it could go. And, you know, you can fill a room, you can fill Chester, you can fill this country with your heart energy, no problem. But what happens when there's an energy... So this energy exchange is happening all the time. When there's a duality, when there's separateness between, say, we've got two individuals... What happens is we get what's called a power play. And energy is involved with power. And so if one person's ideas are, are dominating, if one person has a stronger attachment to their ideas as right and the right thing to do, what they tend to do is the energy tends to flow. They almost suck the energy from the other person. 
And so their energy grows and the other person feels depleted. They feel, you know, their posture does this. They start to feel, oh, they question their ideas. Oh, maybe I won't speak up. Won't. You all know times when you have felt um, disempowered by another person. Do you know what I'm talking about? Where you just feel like another person has just deflated you completely. But equally, you know times when you have felt empowered by another person. You've been in their presence and thought, wow, and you feel more of yourself. You feel powerful. So when people come together in unity with an intention for the highest good, the energy flows between both of you and what it does is it keeps building and it builds. And then you open up to soul energy because you are united and your soul infuses the etheric body with energy. And then you open up as a combined channel to higher energies, to thought forms and ideas from hierarchy, from the universal mind, and those pour in. And all of a sudden, you get a completely different dynamic. And you will know people in your life that you have connected with in this way. Just two minds that happen to come together, and what you create together is far better than either of you could do on your own. I had a girlfriend when I was at university, in our last years when we were writing um, quite lengthy doctorates and stuff, and we both had our own particular skills, but when we got together, we, we did a lot of stuff together. What we produced was far greater than either of us could ever have produced. We were just in harmony, and it would just build, and it was such a wonderful process. You were full of energy. You could spend hours working on it and not even notice you hadn't eaten, not even notice where the time had gone. Have you experienced this? Do, I, do you know what I'm saying? So until we understand this is the power of love, because when you come together with united higher purpose, you are coming from intention of the heart. You're bringing the inspiration of the mind and combining it with that intention of the heart. And your own individual, you know, getting the way you thought things should go doesn't matter because something that you could never even have thought of could be the result of that combining with that group of people, where they come in without a particular agenda, open up to the best ideas that can be channeled in that room at the time. And this is how we will work in the future. This is how we will combine in groups. This is where consciousness will just take off. When we stop holding on to me and mine and protecting my ideas as right and another person's is wrong. And we, we open up, because to open the heart, you have to open up to being vulnerable. That's the whole key about the heart energy. To truly open the heart, you need to be prepared to be, to be questioned, to be wrong, to, to change. We talk, Janet talked about this yesterday. So this is, we have a world where people fight for power. They have a belief in scarcity that there's not enough energy to go round. And part of the reason is that they go around pinching energy off everybody else and everybody's pinching energy off everybody else. That is conditional love. When it's unconditional, where you connect into a source higher and recharge your own energy, there's no need to take any off anybody else. And this is what we're starting to understand. As we open these higher centers, we are opening up to recharging our own energy. And this is what I teach through my yoga and the meditation, is basically teaching people how to recharge their own energy. So that you, as, you, as you open up to receive, so you will receive, and then you can give. And the energy flows. And you can give unconditionally to a child, and you can give but you need to take time. You need to take time to go away and recharge your own energy to be, not to do. And we're starting to understand this dynamic. So if you're in a group situation and it's just getting, it, you can feel the energy of the group is not good and you're not getting anywhere, consciously say, let's take some time out. Let's go outside. Let's uh, ground ourselves. Let's go and recharge our individual energies. Let's come back to this with a change of heart. Let's start again. And this is all what, where we're coming. Now that we're starting to, to coordinate and integrate our personalities, this soul energy, this 
energy can start to come through and we can come together with this energy and create incredible magic. So this is, this is where we're heading. This, and the beauty is that science is up there with us. Science is starting to understand the power of energy. We heal with energy through our hands. Energy, we're starting to use it to, in telepathy. We're starting to connect minds and the energy is flowing. Once we fully understand energy, there'll be no limits. We will be able to tap into all that is. The universal mind comes as hierarchy, these higher beings who have, who have been through all these evolutions and have reached a stage where, where they understand this energy and they can open up to universal mind and they pour this energy down into the mass of humanity to affect public opinion. Okay? And this is, this is the idea that we have custodians of the earth, custodians of man helping. And in, in most people who maybe his personalities are not so coordinated, uh, they're still incongruent in terms of what they say and what they do. They may be still very um, centred in their manipura, their solar plexus chakra, very focused on their own personal egos. But when this energy of hierarchy comes down into the minds of inspired thinkers, what inspired thinkers are, are simply people whose brain and mind have become attuned to the energy of their soul. So that which the mind acts as, as a interpreter of the soul. So rather than the mind being totally ego-based, it starts to be an interpreter of the higher self and opens up, therefore, to, to this omniscience to this universal mind, to the plan of God, if you like. And the, that individual starts to get an idea of their part to play in a much greater plan. So a brain attuned to the mind as interpreter of the soul. And this is where groups like the Theosophical Society fit in. We are working to be inspired thinkers to align your mind with your soul. So that, as Ted was talking about yesterday, the lower personality vehicle becomes a really useful vehicle, a clear channel for the energy of the soul. And we're already seeing this. This brings, these are the people, you are the people to inspire, to bring down and envision a new world, a new way of doing things, because you understand. We're already seeing this in the use of the World Wide Web, of the internet, to unite people. At the touch of a few keystrokes, I can sign a petition to um, influence human rights all over the world. I can object to um, cruelty to animals. I can help to save the planet all through my keyboard in a matter of minutes. I can direct my money energy where right use. I can choose where that money energy will work in the world. And so already this connecting of minds and energy, the, the internet is just the beginning. It is the thought form of bringing down this connection. And we're starting to use it in a really positive way. Because energy follows thought, now think about that, energy, I've just told you what's going on energetically, energy follows thought. And this is where our, if you like, our responsibility is harmlessness. And Ted was talking about this, and I spoke about this um, last year at summer school, harmlessness in your thought, your intent, and your actions. If every one of your thoughts manifested, would that be a good thing? <laughs> That's the kind of responsibility I'm talking about. Okay. <coughs> Remember though, when you see, when you recognize the ego, you transcend it. In that moment, you have a choice. Because in that moment, you step back into the silent watcher and you see your ego at play. You step back into that which is highest in you.
Bailey, the steady impact of right thought on the human consciousness by trained groups of thinkers. And I'm going to talk a little bit now about the way that we train our thinking, and this is the key, is meditation. It aligns us with the universal mind. True meditation attunes you to the vibration of your soul. Your soul is meditating all the time. It's just in a constant state of meditation, sending out energy. When you meditate, your personality and your soul vibrate together. Like when you put the clutch in the car and you, you align the gears so that, you know, it's the same thing. It's the cogs and two wheels that are going like this and you bring them together while you meditate. We detach. It enables us to detach from this... Um, desire nature from this race sex devotional Atlantean old karma stuff going on in our solar plexus. You can step back from your thoughts, from your feelings, your desires, and see them for what they are. But we also enable ourselves to detach from the opinions of others and think for ourselves. If you were to go through all of the thoughts in your mind all day and put a little um, marker next to the original thoughts, there would be few. David um, Rolf was talking about this yesterday in the study group. We don't give ourselves time to think, just to do some, like, um, to open up to some intuitive information like Ted was talking about, by pondering and daydreaming and having time just to contemplate. Time when we stop the busy monkey mind from do do okay, and allow something of more inspiration through. And I teach this in yoga, because your mind and your breath, your thoughts and your breath are linked, so as you breathe deeply and you slow down your breathing, so you slow down the thoughts. And it gives the chance for the higher self to pop an inspirational thought in between all the others that run all day, every day. So meditation and a practice of meditation is man know thyself. It's your service. It's your part of dipping into your unconscious, pulling it out into the light and to, to expand consciousness as a whole. So meditation is an act of service. It develops your intuition. I put an asterisk there to remind me to read a quote. <laughs> this is from Bailey in Glamour, a World Problem. It is a comprehensive grip of the principle of universality when functioning, at least momentarily, a complete loss of a sense of separateness. So meditation develops your capacity for intuition, inner tuition. And intuition, when we see it develop, we see three qualities developing. We see illumination of the mind. Intuition is light. When we talk about light pouring through from the mind of God into the minds of man, that is intuition. It is light. It's that, oh my God moment, literally. Okay. It's when you see a solution that has truth, beauty, and goodness, and you know it is, it is right. <coughs> And you know it has come. It has just come to you. It is a gift. It's not something your rational mind has worked out. It's beyond the capacity of, of the lower mind to work out. It is a connection with universal mind. Universal mind. Intuition is therefore recognition in oneself, not theoretically, but as a fact in one's experience of one's complete identification with the universal mind of one's constituting a part of the great world life and one's participation in the ex eternal persisting existence. It also develops understanding, and this is an understanding of love for other beings with personal detachment. I'm going to talk about this. Ted touched on it. This is Buddhic love. So it's not, I'll love you if you love me, an attached love. No, it's a detached love. It's the love of compassion compared to pity. So when I let love in an unconditional, detached way, I love no matter what, no matter who, not because you're my child, not because you're my partner, because 
you are. And this kind of love, it, it, it's not that you, you are divorcing yourself or separating yourself from that person, quite the opposite. You are allowing them to be who they are and loving them anyway. So in all their personality faults, you see the light of their soul in that moment. So it's the ability to love all beings, yet at the same time preserve personal detachment. This is what Buddha first saw. This is Buddhic love. It's lifting up into the buddhi in the higher self. And the third thing that develops is you start to live from a place of this Buddhic love. Another quote from Bailey, it is that synthetic inclusive grasp of the life and needs of all beings which is the high prerogative of the divine son of God to operate. It negates all that builds barriers, makes criticism and produces separation. It sees no distinction anywhere, even when it appreciates need. And it produces in one who loves as a soul immediate identification with that which is loved as a soul. So we have love, light, and understanding. These three qualities come from a practice of meditation. When we meditate in groups, oh my goodness, this is where the world is going, and this is a really exciting time to be in incarnation. Because science is, is starting to really recognize the power of group meditation. Maharishi, who developed the Transcendental Meditation Movement, noticed this and started to do some studies a long time ago when he found that when 1% of, of a community, of a population meditate, it creates a positive change in that community. So they started to measure it. And what they find is, Ted talked about the alpha brain waves. So when you go into meditation, your brain waves um, change and they become very sort of smooth, low curves. And what happens when a group of people, especially when a group of people meditate together, is we get what's called coherence. So as one wave comes along like this, instead of your waves cancelling out, you add. Okay. So when a group of people get together, they all add. And the power of that... Sorry, the power of that... Uh, group energy is exponential so it's multiplied not added and what they found is there's a certain critical mass where that alpha wave coherence gets into the unconscious of everybody and that's one percent so by you meditating in a group of individuals with united higher purpose you can affect the unconscious of everybody, however, wherever they are on their soul's path. And this is the power of group meditation. There's over 600 studies in 30 countries showing that when a collective group meditate on peace, sending peace and harmony to a conflict zone, to a war zone, for that time, there is peace and harmony in that conflict or war zone. If 1% of the world were to meditate on peace all at the same time, we would have peace on earth. 1% is not a lot. When you meditate in your household, you affect the unconscious of everybody in your household, whether they are open to meditation or not. Oh, the internet, and this is the power of the internet, this is where we have group meditations. There's meditations where everybody in the world meditates at 9 o'clock on a Friday. So you think, as we go around the globe, that's constant meditation on peace. 9 o'clock on a Friday, right around the world. There's World Invocation Day, where everybody's... I'm going to introduce the, the great invocation as given by Alice Bailey to the... Well, the Masters, given to the world. As, as a world group meditation. We have people who recognize the value of meditating on the full moon. When the energy, when, when the channels are more open to higher energies, when you can send and receive higher energies, especially as a group. And if you've ever done full moon group meditations, they are exceedingly powerful. It is a time, the full moon, the days coming up to the full moon is a time when you can delve into your unconscious 
and pull out that which needs to be brought into the light more easily than at any other time. It can be quite a painful time, unsettled time for many people, often emotionally quite a tough time. Many people don't sleep around the full moon, this sort of thing. It brings up emotional issues for them. So groups are powerful vehicles for change. The seventh ray, as the seventh ray energy comes in, the seventh ray has a, a role to integrate. It's involved in the dispersal of information. So the, the internet is very much a seventh ray, has seventh ray qualities. But the other thing that the seventh ray brings in is an inpouring of the Christ consciousness. So an awakening of the heart chakras of all of humanity. And you will find that people are responding to this. There are things now that are acceptable in the world that weren't acceptable five years ago. In terms of the heart, it is becoming more and more acceptable to be more open-hearted, to be more expressive from a heart point of view. Look at, I mean, the new age sort of spiritual movement is really um, this awakening of the heart. It's just, it's just different people respond to that energy in different ways. It's a response. So group consciousness will supersede individual consciousness. And this is where we are heading as we open up our own and our own energy and our own consciousness and we come together in groups. And this is to integrate and fuse mankind along right lines, <coughs> right intention. So groups with inspired intent are forming all over the world and Bailey talks very much about a new group of world servers and evidence. And you will see this everywhere. If you get an, on Facebook and connect to some really inspirational sites, for example. I have a wall that every day is just full of what people are doing in such a positive way, full of positive quotes. It, just to look at it raises my vibration. If you, there's newspapers, I read one regularly called Positive News that only has positive news and it is full of little people doing their soul's work, their particular small part in a greater plan to change the world. And it is inspirational what one small person can do. Well, what can several people do when they unite their energies? And Bailey says here, I like this quote, because I think this is, this is something that the Theosophical Society itself needs to look at. So unselfish people are not rare. Unselfish groups are very rare. Pure detached devotion in a human being is not rare, but to find it in a group is rare indeed. The submergence of personal interests in the good of the family or that of another person is often to be found, for the beauty of the human heart has manifested itself down the ages. To find such an attitude in a group of people and to see such a point of view maintained with an unbroken rhythm and demonstrating spontaneously and naturally, this will be the glory of the new age. And this is where I believe the Theosophical Society needs to look at itself, know thyself, and look at how we come together as a group. Are we bringing heart energy together with inspired minds with an intention for the highest good? I love this quote. So never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, is the only thing that ever has. What I would like to ask, um, as a group, I would like to ask you to bring your energies together. And this is the great <coughs> invocation that is said by people daily all over the world. And this is an opportunity, if you like, to participate in group consciousness and the power and energy of group consciousness. And I would invite us to say this together from a place of open heart. If you say it with me. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love 
within the heart of God. Let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. I've written an article um, sort of with the main points of this talk. I'm going to put it on my website, hopefully next week. Um, if you would like a copy of it, send me an email and I'll happily email it to you. Thank you.